Today we're talking about drug overdoses uh, and what it uh, feels like to overdose. Panda has a personal experience she can share if she likes, but we have a couple uh, things we're going to read today. Uh, either hurry up or get off the pot. Look at me. Look at me. All right, guys. So, what is it like to overdose? What does it feel like? How do you feel like it affects your family? And we're going to get right into it. Heroin overdoses. Symptoms common to all opioid overdoses. Hey, and, uh, it's Panda! Panda is here. Is heroin an opioid? Yes. So, have you had any of these symptoms? Abdominal? Hold on, pause. Um, heroin wasn't my drug. O opioid. Oh, okay. Have you had abdominal cramping in your past? Did you see what episode we were on? Episode 54, uh, we were partially blocked in the United States last week because I did a solo dolo. And, um, Happy Valentine's Day, son. That's why you're wearing red. I wasn't aware. What uh, was your best Valentine's Day? None of them. You know what I loved every Valentine's Day? When um, at school you would fill out all the Valentine's Day cards and you would pass them to your friends and... Um, Valentine's Day, my mom always got me a season's pass. No, that was Easter. Never mind. Abdominal cramping, constipated bowels, unusual sleepiness, unusual changes in normal breathing, including slow, <laughs> shallow, or labored breathing, <sighs> abdominal mouth dryness like cotton mouth, a disoriented mental state, delirious mental state, loss of control over normal body movements. That messes up the sound. Whether consumed in the form of prescription medication or illegal drug, street drugs, ooh, mm. bad girl, uh, all opioids have similar core effects once they enter the bloodstream and travel to the brain. <laughs> Namely, they significantly reduce the normal flow of signals traveling from cell to cell in central nervous system. Um, we get you, the gist. You have central nervous issues, right? Yes. Is that from the opioid? Um, it could be. It's, that's a very good good question because um after years of opioid abuse and um just opioid in general if i was to have took it as prescribed that is um something that is um a side effect you know your hands can drop things your um or like carpal tunnel your hands can drop things and your there's um I, th I think my biggest side effect from the drug use was um, the the brain cells that I lost that probably um, probably cannot grow back. But uh, there is a new study that I'm going to participate in, and it's that. Can we say it? Sh sh shock therapy. Can we say it? Shock. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Uh, ketamine therapy is a new study you were thinking about trying. Yeah, it's that is um, great for an, a friend of a uh, friend you, of get mine. Get out my shot. A friend of mine is actually your mag because I'm bigger. I'm showing my shirt. Oh, ha, jungle brother! A friend of mine has actually done it, and it has it has helped. Um, ketamine, you can research it and, and make your own decision. Um, I have not done it, and but it's for those that are resistant to meds for um, bipolar, depression, PTSD, um, anything trauma, you know, trauma bonded. Um, it just gives that brain a good jolt, zap. No, I'm lying. That's that's not what it does. Rewind, cut that. Uh, so the ketamine is actually, they say it feels more like a trip of acid, if you will, um, a good trip of acid. And I thought ketamine was like a tranquilizer. Well, it's a horse tranquilizer. You should probably research that one. You should definitely do that. Um, it's got some we'll good We'll finish up this and then I'll reviews. look it up. Good um, it, reviews. It is like a tranquilizer. And at first, when you do the study, um, my doctor said that I would be um, in his office in, like, a room, and nobody else would be in the room, so I would be safe. 
it's now kind of starting to sound a little bit scary. I say it out loud, but um, my friend related it to a trip of acid, like a good trip of acid. And um, well, your friends would know. And you know, they say hallucinogens and and shrooms and all that is what they did um, back in the day, and it rewired the brain. So that is what I'm trying to do, rewire my brain. All right. Well, we'll look, look it up after this. We're just going to finish up on the overdoses. Thank you, Taylor. And then you can give us uh, um, your personal experience of what you felt like uh, during the overdose. Some other symptoms of opioid overdoses may not be directly perceived by the affected person. A drop in normal blood pressure. Mm. Tongue discoloration. Mm. Let me see your tongue. All right. That's yucky. A uh, slowed heartbeat, mm. I think, like palpitations or? Slowed is the opposite of palpitation. A uh, blue tinted lips, I've seen mm. that. Fingernails and toenails. Mm. All of them. Loss of consciousness, coma. <clears throat> yep, all of them. Now, are opioids. We can, um, sorry. Are opioids depressants? Um, Bring you down? I, I can't I can't even label that because they got alcohol on here as alcohol well. Alcohol is a depressant. Like opioids, alcohol has potential to trigger an overdose because it slows down the normal rate of activity in the central nervous system. However, the sensations associated with alcohol poisoning only partially overlap those associated with opioid overdoses. They commonly include. So I guess these are. And like um, everybody I know that has done drugs and, you know, like I say, that's a big reason of my moving. My friends have all either died or are um, locked up. Um, they all have this thing where they can't um, they, they can't focus on the task at hand. So if they don't have a good. Um, like skill then what what quality of life is that? Because just like that movie um, with Drew Barrymore. Oh, Forrest Gump. Fifty first date. Oh, fifty. That was a car accident. Mm hmm. Yep, and she just kept repeating the day over and over again mm -hmm. with Adam Sandler. That's sometimes what I feel. Uh, so with alcohol, nausea and vomiting, a confused mental state, and an inability to control or coordinate body movements, unusual slow or irregular breathing. Convulsions, mm -hmm. uh, pale blush skin, I guess that's like redness, a drop in normal body temperature, loss of consciousness, coma. So if anybody out there has gotten drunk once or twice, you've pretty much had all this. Yeah, my face gets red when I drink. I don't drink anymore, but when I did drink um, like liquor, my face would get red. Yeah, especially where pale skin people. Mm -hmm. um, we can get into the cocaine uh after this if you want but if you wanted to share your uh overdose experience just speak into the mic or anyone you want i you had a couple um oh and then we can do the mental um i will um i will do it um as to help somebody so in my experience and tay you ended up coming along in there um my fr i went to my friend's house um after um eating some fentanyl like the doctor prescribed it f to me to wear and um i sucked on the patch mm. i tried to come off of the fentanyl but i mean it, it really made me feel sick so they kept prescribing it they just kept prescribing it to me and I went to my friend, we can say her name, she doesn't really care, uh, Valerie's house, and um, her and her boyfriend that's now, he's he's overdosed and deceased, um, and um, I went there, and I went to go say a sentence, and I just fell right out, and I did it almost distinctly, probably like a friend of mine, uh, I know I kind of get off the subject, but... I watched a friend do the same thing at my house. Um, he had shot up. I won't say his name, but he I've never seen anyone shoot up. And he had shot up Coke. I didn't even know that you could do that, right? He had shot up some Coke. And he came down the stairs. And um, this is right after I had my daughter. Um, came down the stairs and 
went to go say a sentence, fell straight back and started shaking. Um, the whole house cleared out like so quick. His best friends ran his pockets, took his drugs, the money. Um, I mean, it was some stuff like on a movie. And me, you know, I do have some morals left. Um, and the good, like really good friend I was staying with, she's an awesome person. Uh, we called 9-11 and they came out there and straight up, honestly, always tell who cares what they're going to say. You might save their life. Always tell what that person has taken to the best of your knowledge. Because, you know, people kill me when they're like, oh, no, he didn't do anything. And the paramedics ain't stupid, you know. I mean, just. They got to know what to give them. Yeah, exactly. So um, I did. I said he had shot up something. And then um, I helped him the best I could. So I was, he had come alive and he was, he was crazy when he came to it because he didn't know what the F was going on. And um, that's when I was like, you passed out. He was like, where's everyone at? I said, they all left. Um, ambulances on the way. And when they came, they basically made him go because his heart was about to break out of his chest. Um, when you say shoot up cocaine, that isn't that just heroin? No, like no, cooked? no. Uh, cocaine and heroin is totally different. Cocaine and crack is is probably what you're talking about. But I have to stay focused. Here. Yeah. So, um, um, when I went to go, I helped him get into the the ambulance and say goodbye to him, and he had put all these needles down my shirt. I gave him a hug, and he put all these needles down my shirt so that he wouldn't get in trouble. Um, so that, I figured that was the least I could do. And, and I, you know, disposed. You didn't shoot him up. I know, but I feel like, you know, because he was going to go to jail, I guess. And, um, I took, I took them for him anyway. And that was so scary to watch and to see how the people that you think, I mean, one of them was like, um, I believe family one of the people that was there i think it was family and and all the people that have died that i know since then um it's just so sad but i say that to say my advice is always tell what you're taking um like my friend um although she did a bad thing i fell over she left she left me with her boyfriend and went and got my mom who and son who lived up the street and she should have probably not left me for that long because by the time they come back my my lips were purple um and i know that because they had videoed videoed me and uh that was the last time i took fentanyl was watching that video if you want to get somebody scared straight let them see a video of themselves like that. It was like, you know, outer body experience looking down at myself dead. So that, um, that was a big eye opener. And the good thing she did was she told um, my auntie that um, she was like, she's got something in her mouth. And um, she told her, you know, that she thought I had been sucking on a fentanyl strip. They call them suicide suicide strips. Before she, before uh, she came and got us, did you call the police? No. So that was dumb. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> they got it out your mouth. The patch out your mouth. Yeah, the patch out my mouth. And I don't know if you remember, but when the ambulance got there, it took them so long to revive me. Like they hit me a few times with that Narcan. Um, you died, right? Yeah. And they brought you back? Yeah. Oh, my God. We oh. just... That was weird, right? You've been going too long. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I was thankful for her because it was like, God is so good to me. I could have went up the street a little bit further, and instead of me falling out at Valerie's, I would have just fell off the road and how long it would have took for somebody to get to me. If somebody would have got to me, you know, it just, or anything could have happened. Somebody could have chose just to rob me instead of helping me. Yeah. Like I hear is a thing now. And that was uh, right before Christmas. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm telling so. you, cause um, 
that week we got out of school early for uh, Christmas. So I think a couple of days after that was Christmas. I remember being in the hospital and um, and everybody there was like tired of my shit by then. And they were just worried about me and tired of my shit. And I was just, you know, sick. And the doctor was like, look, they don't believe you. And I was like, I swear, I was just trying to open up the the package and and put on my sh my my fentanyl patch and too much got in my mouth and um my son has only stuck up for me at that time once and he was like I believe you mom and I'm like god I am a piece of shit but um it meant a lot that you believed me even if you did it you said it and everybody else was against me so just have that one person but you were in the wrong <laughs> But you, but you believed in me, so you believed in me, and I, I was lying. But you believed me. So what, what's the moral um, of the story that we can wrap up here on opioids and depressants? Okay. Um, well, now you're not going to get that from the doctor. And the patches. Right. You ain't going to get them from no doctor. Uh, so if you're getting them. Uh, well, it's, it's probably put into your drugs. So just get into, they, they have a lot of different clinics out there. They have the Suboxone, which doesn't have to be your life. It can be just a small part in the morning. Um, they have different clinics, methadone, Suboxone. They have this new thing that lasts for six months. You'll have to look into that. And that just blocks the urges. Right. And if you do, um, slip up, um, and I've had plenty of slip ups, you know, if you slip up and get high, it will, you've wasted your money because you're not going to get that, you know, it, it blocks, it blocks you. Could there, um, because I assume that stuff, um, deals with the central nervous system, right? Because it blocks that part of your brain. Could there be long-term damage from the Suboxone or things like that? Suboxone and methadone is supposed to be very safe for you. Um, the worst thing it is is it's bad on your teeth because it makes you crave sugars. Ooh, meth mouth. <laughs> and, hey, yucky. And again, methadone is not the same as meth. <laughs> it's not the same as crystal <laughs> meth. It's a, a big difference. You brush your teeth. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's, that's different. And, you know, and just try to remember if your family is on drugs that... Uh, Why does he keep doing that? I or keep going. If your family is on drugs, they, they're they not having a party still. Like It's not like they're trying to be selfish and and um, rob grandma to get a hit. It's... I'm, they feel bad enough, so go go at a different approach and don't don't beat them while they're down. Um, actually, just like love them, and you'll see a big difference. If if um, I remember, my cousin always joked about man, everybody hated you, and they just embraced my cousin when he um, he was he got bad on drugs for a minute. Uh, they embraced him and, and okay, so the point is this, you have to have the desire to want to yeah, stop. Yeah, you gotta want to. Yeah, that's my point. You gotta hit rock bottom, right? Yeah. But you have to want to. And one day at a time. Just for today. All right, well, my cute cats and Because kids. if you think about it, like, oh my God, for the rest of my life, I have to stop using then you are going to sink. But if you'd be like, mm, just for right now, I won't get high. Um, and there's a stigma. There's a big uh, stigma about, you know, when you get sober, the fun's over. What are uh, just a couple things before we oh, wrap Oh, I up? had good fun when I when I yeah, got sober. Can I finish? Oh, okay. I'm the man. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's a couple things that you found fun after you got sober that you, you would have never done uh, using? Oh, I got to keep up with my phone. I got to get my driver's license. Um, I enjoyed my family a little bit. Um, swimming, 
Swimming? Swimming, yoga. Um, I started going bowling. NA. NA is really what helped me. Um, a program that, I mean, just since I got sober, um, I, I definitely got sp spiritual in a uh, piece that I would have never found. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for this one. Join us on uh, MILF Manor. And, and no, uh, but I have a question for you. All right. Well, yep. So, do you think watching me go through that might stop you from doing any anything, or? Um, yeah, I'll never do pills. I hate pills. Yeah. Well, that's good. At least I could have done that for you. I um, mean, but we all got demons. Like there was a point in my life where I was. He drinking heavily and I'm not in that uh, state anymore I'm better now so I, why, why do you think that you were drinking uh, those are a couple different things mm -hmm. my mom was stressing me out <laughs> at the house to uh, she kept saying uh, you need to you need to vacuum these stairs in if you don't, you're out of here, bud. And I said, oh, I can't handle this. ABC store, call it my name. <laughs> okay, let's just clear up. Uh, I didn't say you're out of here, but I did give you shit to participate in the house. Like, hey, we take turns around here doing the dishes and cleaning up. And vacuuming was a big thing to me. Like, I was very OCD. That's why I know I can't live with people. Like, you've got to keep your feet clean. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is what it feels like to overdose. And uh, join us next week. Click the link below. You can watch a couple of our reaction videos, Mom Reacts. And join us next week. Like, comment, subscribe. We love you, and we'll see you later. Bye.